There's this claim on the internet based on the latest and greatest information available in 2025. That's right, that electric vehicles are way less likely to catch on fire, something like 25 fires per 100,000 EVs on the road, compared to over 3,000 for hybrids and 1,500 for gas cars. Sounds like a win for EV safety, right? Well, about that. This data is complete garbage. Let me show you why. This information gets parroted all over the internet. It shows up in just about every news article anytime there's a fire involving an electric vehicle. I've known this data, it's been crap for a long time, but I wasn't exactly sure where it came from. Thankfully, somebody from the research community recently reached out, and they had all the answers I've been looking for. I'll link all the sources in the description below. What I'm referring to is this graphic right here. It comes from Auto Insurance EZ, and they claim it's the latest and greatest data updated for 2025. It's got to be accurate. It says it's fact checked right here. You'll find that they're using the exact same numbers going all the way back to 2021. Literally nothing has changed except for the year in the headline. That's your first red flag. So where does this data actually come from? Turns out it is from the NTSB the National Transportation Safety Board. Unfortunately, the data is taken completely out of context. The NTSB data set only tracks vehicles involved in fatal crashes in the U.S. between 2013 and 2017. And those vehicle fires? They're only the ones that occurred during those fatal crashes. It doesn't count vehicle fires in parked cars or cars that were charging or even cars that caught on fire while driving due to some type of mechanical failure. As long as everybody made it out okay, the fire's not counted. So again, this is just fires associated with fatalities. So yeah, that's going to result in a major underrepresentation of vehicle fires across all fuel types. This data does paint an interesting picture, but I'll come back to that. The next major flaw, they group vehicles into just three categories, hybrid, gas, and electric. And the way they did it makes no sense whatsoever. For gas, they lump together compressed natural gas, diesel, gasoline, and propane. Mixed in with the hybrid category are flex fuel vehicles, so E85, your ethanol vehicles, as well as convertibles. And when I say convertibles, it's not what you're thinking. It's actually vehicles that were converted away from their original fuel source. And finally, they even lumped hydrogen fuel cell vehicles into the electric vehicle category. Now let's talk about this fires per 100,000 stat they've got in there. To get those numbers, they took the total number of fatal crashes, not just the fatal crashes involving fire, but the total number of vehicles they're looking at to get that 100,000 mark, they're actually looking at automotive sales for just a single year, 2018. Not every vehicle on the road, not even the total sales over a five year period that the study is based on, just one year of sales. So if a certain type of vehicle that's been around forever, like gas or diesel, you're counting fires from a five year period and dividing it by just one year's worth of sales. Of course, the numbers look high, that makes sense. Now flip that around, electric vehicles. In 2013, there were fewer than 100,000 EVs on the road, but by 2017, EVs were still ramping up. There were only about 377,000 registered EVs in the entire country. Fun fact, in 2017, half of the EVs in the U.S., they were registered in California. Anybody surprised? Comparing decades of gas car fires to a tiny slice of time for EVs, of course it makes sense. Of course it makes them look magically safer. This comparison isn't apples to apples. It's not even apples to oranges. It's more like apples to fruit salad. We're looking at the narrowest possible window. Fatal crashes but if you look a little bit closer at that study, the numbers tell a very different story. If we look at the actual percentages, the rate of fatal crashes that involve fire by fuel type, here's what we see. Diesel vehicles actually had the highest percentage of fatalities involving fire at 4.68%. And that makes sense because diesel vehicles are usually very large trucks and large trucks, they're probably going to be more likely to cause a fatal crash. Gasoline, that comes in next at 3.22%. Electric vehicles, they are lower at 1.96%, almost 2%, but overall the hybrids are the lowest of the group at 1.36%.
Now, comparing this data to the number of registered vehicles on the road in 2017, the fatal crash rate for diesel vehicles is about 347 per 100,000 vehicles registered. And for gasoline, it's 75 per 100,000 vehicles registered. I'd expect those numbers to stay fairly consistent since the number of gas and diesel vehicles on the road, that doesn't change very much year over year. For electric vehicles, on the other hand, the rate is just 13.5 per 100,000 vehicles on the road. But that number is misleading. EVs at that time, again, they were very new. And the number of registered electric vehicles on the road, it was climbing fast year over year. So looking at the data this way, using five years of crash data against one year of EV registrations, it doesn't really tell us much. But realistically, how accurate are these numbers? Roughly 14% of all fatal crashes don't specify the vehicle's propulsion type because as I've mentioned in other videos, the VIN number doesn't contain that data. If you think about it, it's pretty crazy. Not only should you be able to determine if a vehicle's gas, diesel, hybrid, or electric from the VIN number, you should also be able to identify the battery chemistry. This is something that needs to change, and it needs to change fast. It turns out, based on the information we have today, EVs aren't magically safe. They're just underrepresented in the fatal crash data. Because, again, there just weren't simply that many vehicles on the road at the time of this study. In order to really understand the magnitude of this fire risk, we need to get meaningful data. We need to know exactly how many vehicles caught fire in the U.S. during a specific year. And we need to compare those numbers to the number of registered vehicles in each fuel category for that same year. I'd also love to see a breakdown of the age of these vehicles that are catching on fire. All vehicles. What that breakdown looks like. Because it does matter. A 15-year-old gas car isn't the same as a brand new EV. And on a side note, the cause of the fire matters too. If a portable heater catches a garage on fire and two vehicles burn, those shouldn't be lumped in with a vehicle that caught on fire spontaneously while charging. Unfortunately, that kind of data just isn't being tracked right now. And until it is, we need to stop pretending these fire risk comparisons are based on solid ground. My biggest question is this. How do we stop our media from quoting misleading or flat-out false information every time there's a vehicle fire? Because it happens constantly. But here's the thing. It's been a long time since the media has been trustworthy on technical topics like this. Sometimes they're pushing an agenda. Other times, it's just ignorance, repeating what they've seen without questioning where that information came from. And until that changes, it's up to the people like us to decide what's really going on. People who actually dig into the data to set the record straight. So is it possible that EVs are less likely to catch fire? Sure. Is it also possible they're more dangerous when they do catch fire? Also yes. But Auto Insurance EZ, their data set, it doesn't prove anything except how easy it is to twist numbers when nobody's checking the math. We need better data honest comparisons, and a lot less of this recycled nonsense, especially when lives and training decisions depend on it.